The 12 must-have charts on your Salesforce dashboard. That's what we are talking about on today's webinar. The 12 charts that give you robust visibility of the sales pipeline, allow you to forecast accurately, and give you the analysis and metrics about historic sales performance that will allow you to drive future revenue. So welcome to the webinar. My name is Gary Smith. I'm your host today and I'm delighted to say that alongside me is Dan Bailey. Dan is one of our senior consultants with really tremendous experience of helping companies with their dashboard reporting. So welcome to the webinar, Dan. Thanks, Gary. Hi. We're going to dive straight in. Just a couple of things before we do. You absolutely can ask questions. Just type your question into the question pane on go to webinar and um, you can't see him but uh, also here in the room is Ben and Ben will be monitoring the questions for us. In fact we'll do our best to answer all of the questions that are asked today. And actually in actual fact to, to answer the first question, yes we are recording and yes we do plan to publish the recording. In fact, we'll do it around about this time tomorrow. We have a brand new blog post for you, which we will publish tomorrow. It includes all 12 of the charts. It includes commentary and examples of how to use those charts, along with lots of other links to useful resources and blog posts that we've written about each individual chart. So we'll add the, the webinar recording to that blog post. So keep an eye open for that around about this time tomorrow. We are, uh, you can obviously see us on the uh, webcam. You have the uh, uh, dubious uh, pleasure of being able to see Dan and myself. Um, when we dive into the dashboard, feel free to either minimize that or keep it up in the top left hand corner or wherever you want. That's up to you. You can, you can adjust that on your PC or your laptop. So I think we're ready to get started. Let's jump straight over to the dashboard. So this is the dashboard that we are going to go through today. Now, you might be thinking, well, that is all very well, but how do I create that dashboard myself? Well, the answer is you don't need to. You don't need to. A lot of people, a lot of people on the webinar have already installed this dashboard. You can go and get it for free from the App Exchange. Um, so go and do it immediately after the webinar if you haven't already done it. There is a version for Enterprise and Above, so Enterprise and Above Edition, and there is a version of this exact same dashboard with all of the charts, all of the underlying reports, and so on. Um, there's a version of that for Professional Edition as well. They are they are identical dashboards with one small difference on one report. So. As we'll, we'll come to that and explain that difference um, uh, when we get to it. But go and get that dashboard for free. In fact, we'll send us an email just immediately after the webinar just to point you to the link uh, for that. So you can go and get that, that dashboard. So let's get started. Um, we'll start. We'll start actually over in the top left hand corner of the dashboard. We've got three metrics across the top here, including uh, a metric just to tell us the value of deals that we have closed one so far this year, this financial year at least. Um, you know, if you're going to start to analyze sales performance, if you're going to have uh, a review with people about sales performance, then a good place to start is to understand historic sales performance. And that's what this first dashboard chart tells us. So it shows how much, how many deals people have uh, closed one over the uh, over the course of this financial year. And we can see that Dave is probably the uh, the top performer. And um, we can see that perhaps uh, Peter is the poorest performer. So without knowing anything else, we're going to look at a bunch of other dashboard charts that might help us to understand that performance and just drill down into it in a bit more detail. Yeah, I think the thing to remember here, Gary, is that it gives a great overview of what each salesperson is doing throughout the year. And you can see it broken down by month, which I think is important. And what I would say is that the 
the report that this is built on is a matrix report. So oh, yeah. if we if we drill down into that, we can see the structure of that matrix report. And I think aesthetically, this is this is really important um, in terms of getting a good oversight and a good view of what is happening compared to a matrix report. Uh, as compared to a summary report, yeah, you, I, I suspect you, you're going to say yes. Yeah. I would say compared to a summary report, and a lot of people are comfortable with summary reports, and they're not as comfortable with matrix reports. But I think that you can really see the rewards here of using a matrix report yeah. as opposed to a summary report. Yeah. That, you know, aesthetically, it is very clean. Yeah, yeah, an easy way to understand it. You can build the chart actually on the, using a summary report or a matrix report, but when in doubt, build uh, build a matrix report. So, in actual fact, I know in the blog post there's a link to summary versus matrix reports yes. um, as well. Um, the other thing about this chart, and, and you'll see this on on some of the others as, as well. Um, this particular the dashboard and the, and the dashboard package show the performance based on individual sales person and that's because we can't predict what your sales team structure is going to be whether you, you use fields on the opportunity or fields on the user or the role hierarchy whatever it is so if you do install the dashboard package feel free you can absolutely modify any of the charts on this on this dashboard because if you have a large sales team you might want to structure this chart by region or territory or, or however you organize your sales team so uh, go ahead and do that so that's the um, that's the closed one uh, so far this year let's have a look at the chart alongside it um, this one in the middle here so this is showing the pipeline the pipeline by month and by opportunity stage now and it's showing above that um, the total value of all open opportunities so we know that's the total value and that's how it's split over the forthcoming months in fact if I was only going to have one if I could only have one dashboard or one dashboard if I could only have one dashboard chart to manage a sales team then this would probably be it because we're in February um, at the moment, in fact, when I look at this, we're in, um, there's what, just under, uh, is it just under two working weeks left yeah, in February? Yeah, that's about two working weeks yeah. there, Gary. So, you know, we've got a bunch of deals in negotiation, we've got some in customer evaluating, investigation, uh, and prospecting. And I think, you know, if your sales, if your sales cycle is typically three months or two months or whatever it might be, then the first thing I'm going to be saying is, hold on a minute, guys, these deals that are in prospecting, bear in mind there are only two working weeks left in the month, um, Are we? do we really think that those deals are going to close successfully this month? So I would immediately be drilling into that report and, and expanding it and looking at some of these prospecting deals and starting to ask questions about those deals. Um, that's really important. I think something to remember here is that this chart looks good for us right now because we've been consistent in our approach to closing opportunities in the past. So I've worked with a few companies uh, in the past where we've seen opportunities that were pre-February going back two or three years perhaps on this chart and that is not what we're looking for here. This is a pipeline chart so it should be looking towards the future so I think good opportunity management helps you to structure this chart better and it gives you the results that you're looking for so unless you've got a time turn and deals aren't going to close in the past correct yeah correct and I actually suspect we might come back to a bit of that conversation when we talk about things like conversion rates and so on yes and the and the, the impact that that can have on on pipeline yeah absolutely sometimes when you first structure this report or when you if you implement this chart into your into your into your own business you might find you've got a whole washing line of historic uh, open opportunities so yeah either close them some of those deals will be valid deals that are still open but should have a future close you date you want to shift that close date yeah you want to move the close date there might be as dan says sometimes even i've seen deals you're absolutely right deals going back two or three years and nobody really knows what happened to those deals so just close them so we want to see a crisp pipeline it won't necessarily look like this sort of curve going here but you're really trying to understand and get a grip um, of the pipeline I mean there's a couple of other things that spring out to me yeah. here um, I'd, be, I'd be concerned about December here Gary. <laughs> I mean we've got a lot of opportunities seemingly at December and I do know there is a habit amongst salespeople to just put opportunities towards the end of the month it's a, it's a case of putting them there forgetting about them and dealing with them at a later date but how many opportunities are we closing do you, do you know something I, I don't think it's necessarily dealing with them at a later date. I think people I think opportunities get created 
where we kind of know there's a sort of deal in there somewhere, particularly when people are under pressure about the pipeline size. Yes. They create, well, there's an opportunity in here somewhere with this account. Oh, I've got another 11 months to go. I'll put it in the end of the year. Yeah. And um, Which is why you often get deals due to close either on the last day of the month or in this case probably on the 31st of December. I don't know about you, but I'm not working on the 31st of December. No, I am not. I'm using the pub. Yes. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. So, so, so you're absolutely right, Dan. The other thing that uh, the other thing I notice on this chart actually is um, there's some deals there in negotiation. Is it really going to take us three or four months to close those deals in negotiation? Maybe it is, but on the other hand, maybe there's something that we can do to bring those deals forward. Or um, maybe they're in the wrong stage, or the wrong month, or whatever it is. So I would say overall that that pipeline doesn't look too bad. We've got plenty of deals again. You know, in prospecting for March, depends how long our sales cycle is. So if you're selling oil rigs and your pipeline is five years, then you would you you wouldn't want to see prospecting deals here. If your sales cycle is typically a month or whatever it might be, then that that would be fine. Um, the chart alongside it is one that we would often use in conjunction with that because it's the exact same chart in many respects, just with um, by opportunity owner. So it's the same information split by opportunity owner. So again, I can see that for uh, for February, for example, um, uh, Sean hasn't got much, Sarah's got a stack, uh, John, and, and so on. So I can immediately understand if this is by person or by sales team, where my business is due to close for this month and next month and so on. Yeah, and I think this is really useful for sales managers because you can see what your team is doing. And uh, I think Gary mentioned it earlier. It doesn't have to be summarized, much like the first chart. It doesn't have to be summarized by opportunity owner. You can have it by, you know, region or sales team. There are other ways to summarize this chart, but it is very useful. And I do know a lot of sales managers who really do pay attention to that one. Yeah. Absolutely, and I hadn't. Funny enough, I hadn't noticed this before. But we mentioned a moment ago about um, you know Peter's sales performance being low um, historically over the over the over the last year. I can see um, here you know how much um, pipeline he's got for the different months uh, and so on. So um, you know again, it's a way of starting to get a full understanding of the of the sales team and and you know how much business we might be closing in the future we're going to talk a little more about you know do i have enough pipeline to meet my target and so on so we'll we'll come to that in um in just a moment let's um scroll down a bit let's um let's look at this pipeline shape here Gary. The, the funnel yeah the funnel what's your view about this chart well I, I think it can be informative. I think that the only thing I would say about it is it's very difficult to gauge just by looking at that funnel how yeah. much is in each section. and without, that, the, without the numbers. Without the numbers. And that's why we've put the numbers in. Yeah. You know, It's important to see those numbers. It helps you get a real understanding of what's going on there. But the shape of that chart is never going to change. <laughs> Even if you've got 2 million in investigation and 200,000 in prospecting, it's still going to look like a funnel. It's actually difficult without the numbers. It's because, it, it, it's because there's quite a lot more than the other. Sometimes when you've got values about similar it's quite difficult just with the naked eye to see whether the surface area of the graph is 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 different you might want and, to get your rulers out yeah indeed yeah um and um it, the, the shape of it and the size of it always stays the same so why why bother with it um why bother well i actually think it's a good charter i remember writing the blog post it's a good chart to look at once a week yeah and the reason i think it's a good chart to look at once a week is the the, the the pipeline we, we we want to understand in the total pipeline is it roughly in proportion so the chart above gives us an indication well how much what's the value of deals that we've got going forward what does the pipeline look like by stage going forward and this takes the total pipeline and tells us whether it's roughly in proportion now i would say that doesn't look too bad we've got 0.78 in investigation 1.77 um, that probably doesn't look too bad, but often when you when you look at a a, a funnel, look at you look at a pipeline, you might find that the you know the evaluating the investigation stages on sometimes quite similar or even 
we have less pipeline in the proceeding stages or maybe we've got less pipeline in the prospecting stage so that at least tells me i need to do something You've so got to take an action there. yeah I, exactly exactly so um so in this case it doesn't uh, look too bad um and just as we were talking there i noticed that um the pipeline here for may we've got a kind of dip in may now maybe that's okay uh is there some you know historical reason why that is should i be concerned about that only you know the answer to that in the context of your business but again it's starting to give you the information you need to ask the right questions and um start to understand um how much business you might have going forward should we do this one next the top 10 accounts with the most pipeline yeah i like that chart um i like it because i like it because if you say to a say if you say to a company what are the top 10 most important prospects and customers most people can have a pretty educated guess at the top two or three but once you get them seven eight nine ten uh, you know it becomes much more hazy yeah. um this is a this is a dashboard chart it's a dashboard table in fact that helps you prioritize your time in fact we can see here that in fact high hill estates has twice more than twice as much pipeline as the next nearest account that's not necessarily one opportunity it might be a bunch of opportunities yeah. but it's something you're going to want to focus on isn't it you know i've i've worked with quite a few companies where the ceo or sales director they've only got time to look at one chart and really understand where they should be putting value in in the next few months that's the chart they look at because yeah. you can see that higher hill estates is potentially going to bring you in a lot of money could we do one overall big deal with them one yeah. framework deal yeah. whatever you know one unique um you know the unique supply deal whatever it might be yeah. and i think the other thing and this applies this actually applies to all charts but it, it kind of brings it home on this one to me is that this dashboard you should replicate this dashboard at the company level at the region at the territory and at the individual salesperson yes. level so the top 10 most important accounts for a salesperson yeah are going to be different to a region to a different to a territory to a company or whatever it might be but again it's a way of prioritizing your time yes. if you're only going to take the chief executive to, to one account if you're going to take your manager if you're going to take the the local your, your engineer to one account that starts to help you i think we're going to take to high hill aren't we uh, in this case yes yes we are um guys we've actually had a question come in yeah. um it reads superb dashboard is great to tell it tell at a certain point of time such as the end of financial year or month closure how about historical data to tell a trend maybe okay okay good I don't, um, hopefully everybody could hear that it's a question about um the trend in the pipeline um I'm just going to hold that question. Yeah. Um, let's do it now. Okay. Let's do it now. Let's yeah. deal with that very question okay. now. I was going to go under the pipeline by created date, which is a bit of a trend in itself. So let's talk about the trend in the pipeline um, as well. We've got two trend charts on this dashboard. Um, we've got the long-term pipeline trend, and we've got the one below it with the short-term pipeline trend. So the difference between them is the long-term pipeline trend is what's called in Salesforce an as-at report. It runs on the first of each month. And what's it showing? Well, it's showing the pipeline as at the 1st of October, the 1st of November, the 1st of December, 1st of January, etc., etc. So it will run on the first of each month, and it shows the historical pipeline. In other words, the pipeline as it was on the first of each of those months so i i like this report uh, yeah, it's, it's a good i report. think it's a good report for showing the overall trend in the size of the pipeline and um very often you see well actually the pipelines change these in our particular example the the amounts are fairly much in proportion but quite often you can see a, a trend an increase let's say in the pipeline or a decrease in the pipeline because of a shift in one of those um, opportunity stage uh, values so that's the long-term trend in the pipeline the one below so are you going to say something yeah, about that? no let's just talk about the short-term mm -hmm. pipeline trend um, that adds a lot of value for me and I, I think there are you know kind of two reasons that adds a lot of value and that is as you were saying before some companies do have a longer term outlook towards their sales but a lot of companies are using 
two, three month cycles and turnarounds. And I think that short term trend when you've got those short sales cycles is really indicative of what's going on within the company. So I, I think that adds real value. And not only that, I think it's it can it can add value when you've got some sort of marketing activity going on. Yes, that's, so that's what I think. If yeah. you've got a trade show or something like that coming up and you put a lot of effort into it, you're going to want to see some sort of pickup from that. You're going to want to see some sort of upturn in opportunities or prospecting opportunities. Yeah. And that's going to show you if that's happened subsequent to that trade show. So I think that that can be really useful. I think it's a good way of understanding if you need to make a sudden shift in tactics. In other yes. words, I might have looked at my uh, I might have looked at my funnel chart and said um, I might have said, oh, good grief, we need a lot more prospecting. We need we're short of early stage funnel. Or I might look at it and say, you know, we've got all this prospecting. Um, uh, early stage opportunities, but we're not driving it through the pipeline. So you might have said to the guys, you know, the session, right, this week, focus on this one thing alone. And that might be, for example, increasing pipeline. Get on the phones, do everything we can to increase the pipeline. Well, I want to know, I don't want to wait a month, I want to know next week, yes. or know at the end of this week, yes. whether that's had um, whether that's had an effect. So, so the long term and the short term pipeline trend. I don't know, Dan, um, if the question was also about other ways of tracking sort of trend in the pipeline. The, 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 I'm, and I'm not sure who asked the question, but we'll come to one or two other sort of trend type of pieces of information as well. Um, there isn't really a way in Salesforce, let me rephrase that, there isn't a standard way in Salesforce of tracking the length of the sales cycle and the duration of the sales cycle in terms of individual stages. Um, you can measure the, the the last stage change date, and you can you know what today is, so you can subtract the, the two. Therefore, you know what, you know when the last stage change was. But that's not really telling you about the velocity or the change in velocity over time. There is a way to do. It. In fact, we have a we have an app. Um, that allows you to do that. So, if velocity and um, tracking the you know the trend in the sales pipeline over time in in terms of velocity uh, and other statistics is of interest to you, then um, then get in get in touch with us. Um, probably leads us that discussion of the size of the pipeline. Yeah. Um, it's probably a good segue into um, into this chart. So. I think that I think this this chart actually does two things. It's showing the pipeline by created date. So it's show, telling me that in July, for example, um, this is how much pipeline total pipeline we created in that month, and this is where it is at the moment. Now, why is that important? Well, I think it's important for two reasons. The first reason is that. Um, I was looking at this. If this was real information, I'd be a bit concerned. Actually, we've got a pretty lumpy chart here. Yeah. That would imply wow. we're making an effort to uh, build pipeline in some months and doing uh, yeah, doing absolutely a nothing else. from July there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if this was this was a real company, I would be. Um, I might be concerned about that. Um, I'd probably all other things being equal, you want to see a fairly, you know, a fairly steady um, and ongoing contribution to the overall pipeline. Obviously. Life's not quite as simple as that. End of the year, there's often less pipeline and more focus on closing deals and so on. But but all things being equal, I'd be a bit concerned about. It. But I'm really looking to see is new pipeline being created? Where is it? And I might also want to drill down to that report and look at it by person. Who's creating pipeline? Yes, yeah. I'd I'd be concerned as well here, Gary. If you've got a short sales cycle. A bit like we spoke about earlier, why we've still yeah. got something sitting in there from February 2016. Yeah. And if we're talking, it's typically three months, maybe even six months. You don't really want to be seeing opportunities that were opened almost a year ago still in that in that pipeline. Yeah, yes. I mean that's an interesting point. Really, it's t it's it's a surrogate for quality. Mm. It's a surrogate for pipeline quality in the sense that if my if my sales cycle is three months, I can completely accept that sometimes a deal will take. 12 months, six months, nine months, whatever, sometimes that will happen. But if I intuitively know that my sales cycle is 90, 100 days, something like that, then these deals that have been, you know, are, are a year, have been sitting in the pipeline for a year, are they really, so we call them zombie deals, yes. you know, are they, yeah. are they dormant deals that are just, because a lot of sales, a lot of sales people, a lot of sales managers are under pressure about the size 
of the pipeline. Yes. So taking deals out of the pipeline, moving them to closed loss or just getting them out of the pipeline doesn't help alleviate that pressure so what happens is those deals well you know with the best will in the world those deals aren't going to close but taking them out of the pipeline isn't a good you know isn't on the face of it a good thing to do either because i'm under pressure about the size of the pipeline on the other hand if i don't do that then this chart i'm just not getting that robust no view you're not getting the true of the facts pipeline. There, so you? um you know so it's a right i think for managers all of these charts there's no I said I had my favorite chart, but there's no one chart I think that kind of dominate should dominate over and above everything else. No, they um, they they you know you use them in conjunction and they all tell a story, don't they? That I think that's why there's twelve of them. I think yes. you know they're all telling us something about a different part of the pipeline or a different part of the opportunity or a different part of the sales team, and together you can build a picture. I think that's what's important here. And, and, and I agree. And it's not that it's not that one let me say that again. It's not that the charts tell you the answer. No. They don't tell you the answer. They tell you where to go and look for the answer. So is it right or is it wrong that all that pipeline was created in July? We don't know. No. But now that we have that information, we can go and look for the right answers. In in lots of sales meetings and pipeline reviews, more time is spent discussing the accuracy of the data and and, and what everybody perceives to be the trends. Here are the here we are here are the facts. Now let's understand the reasons and, and spend the time more productively. Yes. Um, I'm going to come back and these, they've, we've got some charts on the left hand side, but I'm going to move down to this one. And Ben is saying that we have another yeah, we've pertinent got a question. Of, a few questions, questions, questions okay. That have come in. Yeah. Um, the first one reads: Dashboard is based on TCB only, or IYR is included? <laughs> <laughs> Might have to elaborate. Could, a bit more uh, yeah, whoever answered that question, could they uh, could they just elaborate a little bit for us uh, what they meant? I I suspect it might be a question. It might be a question about scheduled revenue, perhaps. So, whoever just asked that question, maybe you could just elaborate a little yeah, bit more, more for us. Yeah. And the second one is: Is the app you just mentioned on the App Exchange? If so, what is it called? So, just mention some of the apps we have available. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, this the the app is called uh, GSP Sales Dashboard. Uh, there are two of them. Um, there's the professional edition and the enterprise edition version. The difference between the two, they are exactly the same, as I said at the start. They, they're exactly the same, apart from this, the short-term pipeline trend. You can't do that in professional edition because you need a feature called historical trending. So if you're using enterprise edition or above, go and set up historical trending in your Salesforce environment it is dead easy to do so just a quick segue here go to your setup area and search in the setup for historical trending you'll see it here you can only do this you can't do this in um, uh, professional doesn't it doesn't exist but go to the opportunity and just enable historical trending for opportunities that checkbox there click save um, and then you'll be able to install the dashboard and it will run and hopefully look something uh, like this um, so I don't know that but we we will send out um, an email just after the webinar just explaining how to I'll, we'll include the links make it yeah, easy for yes. people yeah yeah let's make it easy there's an ebook as well actually so a lot of the content that we're covering here uh, we have an ebook which takes each of these 12 charts and goes through them um, again in a bit more detail and gives you some pictures and some examples um, and so on and if the person who asked the question just missed the very start uh, we have a blog post coming tomorrow with all of the 12 charts on it so we will uh, so watch out for that and and recording of the of the webinar um should we look at this deals closing this month yeah i mean it's a nice follow-on yeah yeah it is actually it is so because all of the the charts that this tells us about the size of the pipeline this tells us these trends tell us about the size of the pipeline this tells us about the size of the pipeline we've talked about the size of the pipeline here but what about the quality of the pipeline um yes. this 
<laughs> yes. This this particular chart, and this is the chart that's included in the in the dashboard package. So this is deals that are due to close this month. Now you can run this dashboard chart. You could run it for all deals in the pipeline. You could run it for all deals this quarter, whatever time period you want. We've chosen in this example to run it for deals due to close this month. Now what's it telling us? It's giving us three metrics. It's telling us how long the deal has been open. So um, from from the, when it was initiated to, to, to today, how many days has it been open? Secondly, it's telling us the number of days since the last stage change so it's telling us the number of days there and this column here is telling us how many times the close date has moved from one month to the next month or to another month so it's not counting changes within a month we're probably not too worried if it slips a day or a week or whatever we're interested in changes where it, it switches from one month to another month or to a future month actually yeah um there's you know first off what i'm seeing here is i'm, I'm concerned about the barclay school of music opportunity gary and i I'm, was that then? well i'm <laughs> i'm concerned because it's had its close date shifted four times and it's yep. been open for yep, 201 yep. days you know that doesn't look to me like it's going to be closing this month dan bailey are you seriously telling me that this month that deal will close i i i don't think it will gary yes exactly so you know, I 100% I agree. I mean, we can look at a few. We've got the one that's been open um, 187 days. So, you know, what's that best part of, of half a year? Um, it hasn't had the stage change for over 100 years. It slipped four times. So bear in mind, these are deals that in our pipeline, if we go back to this one, in our pipeline, they are in here. Yeah. They are in here due to close this month. That's a concern for me. Yeah. And you see it time and time again that you have a great pipeline. Everybody thinks that we are going to be on target. Um, there might be deals in there that are due to close on the last day of the month. And guess what happens on the first of the month? We think, um, uh, I was going to use a naughty word there, but we think, oh, X, yep. we missed our sales target. All of that pipeline just shifted from one month to another. Well, how do you get a grip of that? And this, to my mind, is a very powerful way of getting gripped. So there's an underlying report that shows you all of the, all of the deals due to close this month. The table shows you the top ten, but just immediately, as you as you say, Dan, just immediately focuses your eye on some of these deals. You think, hold on a minute, maybe that deal, that that school of music deal, maybe that is going to close this month. Maybe, maybe, this and that's is fine. Month. Maybe it is the month, but maybe it's also one of those those kind of zombie deals that's been there uh, for ever in a day. So it's a great way. I think the, the the kind of pipeline by created date, looking at some of these opportunities, a way to investigate, you know, as a starting point, some of those. But this is really getting down to the nub of it, in my opinion. Yeah, I use those in conjunction with one another to yeah. really kind of understand this. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, where should we go next? And let's just um, let's look at a couple of these uh, other charts down at the bottom here. Yeah, since I think we're that already... leaking funnel leads yeah, yeah. on from where we've been. It does. It does. Um, what stands out for you there, Gary? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. I know. Well, you do know what I'm going to say. What are you going to say? Well, I'm going to say that I'd, I'd be concerned Let's about yeah about negotiation. Yeah. Why is that? I'd, well, I'd be concerned because uh, you know to get to the negotiation stage means that a lot of effort's been put in yeah. by by either the company or by the salesperson themselves or by the sales manager. So to be slipping and losing the opportunity at the point of negotiation, I, you know, it's something that I'd want to understand a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah, there's a very good book by a guy called Bud Suze, S U S E, who wrote a book it's called some it's called something like Winning Enterprise Sales Deals, something like that. Anyway. Bud Susie. Um, and he lists, um, he's talking about large scale deals and he lists, he says there are 30 things that always happen in any large scale deal and, and he, he tells you what those things are. But his whole mantra is, is really about qualification because he says there's no bigger sin in sales than coming a close second. And we don't know the background. This chart is not telling us the background, but what it is telling us is that we had two deals in the last 20, 120 days. There are two deals that went from negotiation to close lost. Yes. Now, presumably, 
we invested a fair bit of time, effort, resources, and everything else in getting them to negotiation in the first place. Now, maybe that's fair enough. You know, it maybe it, it does, does happen. happen. It, it does absolutely happen. does happen. Does but really, what we're looking at is is really the trend. I mean, you might say, you might say, we've got a bunch of deals. So these are deals that moved. I don't know whether we explained this properly, but these are the deals that that were set to closed lost in the last 120 days. They were set to closed lost in the last 120 days. And this is the from stage. So mm -hmm. this is where they came from. And so, I'd expect to see quite a few shifting from prospecting into closed loss. You know, yeah. it's, it's an early stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, perhaps it didn't go as planned. You'd expect that. Well, it, you might argue, you might argue that investigation should be higher than that prospecting stage. It depends how you define your defense depends how you define your opportunity stages. Arguably, you know, investigation investigation to my mind, your discovery or whatever you might want to call it, you are working with a prospect, you're working with a customer, you're understanding how your solution can meet the customer's problem or opportunity, whatever. Yes. Now, sometimes you just have to face the fact that it can't or there isn't a meeting of the minds all sorts of reasons but you know as bud suze says get out early yes get out as early as you can yep. if you just if you don't think you've got a realistic chance of winning this deal so i think this is a great report for um helping you you know understand the, the funnel should leak that's why we call it a funnel yes. but where is it leaking and why is it leaking so again th those negotiation deals i might want to you know drill down which salesperson or whatever it is or which team or, or whatever so again it's giving me the information let's just quickly turn some down here let's just quickly touch on the um on on this chart here this we've in the package we've deliberately put it at the bottom because not every business uses expected revenue or or, or weighted pipeline in other words the value of the opportunity multiplied by the probability. And if you're not using it, we do have a blog post, don't we, about that? <laughs> about why you should use it. <laughs> yes. <about> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that once you once once you get to a critical mass of salespeople, you've got a critical yeah, mass of opportunities, yeah. then it is a statistically valid way of forecasting your revenue. The argument against weighted pipeline is, you know, the sales set is a binary outcome. We're going to, it's either going to be 100% or it's going to be 0%, not something in the middle. And I kind of accept that. On the other hand, the problem is I've got 100 opportunities due to close in February. The problem is I don't know which ones are going to win and which ones I'm going to lose. If I did, I wouldn't bother to chase some of the ones I'm going to lose. So, you know, you calculating that weighted value can be a statistically accurate way of, of forecasting my revenue. Um, in fact, I remember on that blog post, one of the points we make is that don't forget, people assume that the probability field in Salesforce is locked and it's locked to the opportunity stage. Yes. It's linked to the opportunity stage, but an individual salesperson can you, modify you it. You can shift that around, can't you? You can move it. Um, we have one customer with a sales manager. Um, they have a stage which is at 50%. He says, I won't accept 50%. So either 50, get off the fence. It's either 51% or it's 49%. Which one <laughs> else out of the fence are you on? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we covered those trend charts. We covered this that um, pipeline shape. Let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's go down this left hand side. Let's talk about conversion yeah. rates. I like this chart, Gary. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think it's quite indicative of what is actually going to happen to your pipeline. You know, okay. So, you know, if you're seeing kind of, we're seeing what, 40% there? Which is seeing, pretty good, I'd say, yeah. Which is pretty good. You're probably looking at 30%, aren't you? In, in most many businesses, businesses yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're looking at 40%, you, you kind of know that you're likely then to turn around 40% of your, your forecast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this chart is telling you the, the conversion rate. So it's telling for all of the deals that we won in January, what was the win rate by value? And what was the win rate by count? So how many, what, how many deal? What was the percentage win rate by the number of opportunities yep. and by the value of opportunities? Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I just would say that what I have seen that there is a danger that, that you rely on this and you you try to get your percentages up. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think that's best practice here, is it? To, I think it's a chart. You have to, you have to use judiciously. 
Mm. What I mean by that is that I think this is, I actually like this chart because it's telling you about your performance. I mean, what happened in November, our win rate by count was higher than the win rate by amount. We can see that in most other months it was the win, it was the other way around. I think it's a great chart to drill down on yeah. and look at individual salesperson performance and understand win rate over time by salesperson. But here's the warning. The challenge with this chart is that if you overemphasize the importance of conversion rates, what's going to happen? Well, one thing that could happen is people, salespeople are reluctant to put a deal into the pipeline until there's a until they are pretty confident that there is a deal there to be won. Yes, you don't want to look at this as much as you'd like to see it all at a hundred percent. That's not going to be an accurate reflection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen cases where people are, I mean, no business in the, not, not the Lama, where I've not win 50, 60, 70, 80% of their deals. But I've seen conversion rates showing that. Well, what that's telling me is that when I look at my pipeline here, my pipeline is inaccurate because it's telling me that they are only putting deals into the pipeline, that they're confident there is a deal there to be yes. done. And funnily enough, you get the opposite. Yeah. You get the opposite yeah. happening. Um, we looked at this, where was it? Here we go. The pipeline by created day. But if I'm overemphasizing the imp overemphasizing the importance of conversion rate, then I've, then as a salesperson, I've got little incentive to close out some of these dormant deals that I just know haven't got legs. So again, it's 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 like a lot of things. You know, there's no one chart dominates. No. Use it in the context of your business. Um, Chart underneath is an interesting one as well. In fact, we've got one obviously dominant performer on that chart. This is the average, the average size of closed one deals. Um, and we see that Sarah um, has a much bigger average deal size than uh, than the other guys. Now, again, I think it's a sort of chart you use it in connection with these some of these other things: the size of the pipeline, the conversion rate, how much pipeline's been created. Yeah, you don't you don't want to assume here that Sarah is just outperforming the rest of the team. That's not necessarily what this is showing. Um, she could have. Uh, you know a better customer she could have better opportunities she could be a more senior member of the team so it's not necessary that Sarah is outselling the rest of the guys but you know she's doing something different let's look right, at yeah. what she it's might the point it's giving you the information correct it, rather than assuming that Sarah's got you know an, a high average deal, it's giving you the information for you then to go and have a conversation mm. and you know start to coach is, is she doing something that that Sean isn't but yeah, perhaps we we let Sarah sit down with Sean, and you know, yeah, yeah. she worked it out with him. I tell you where I've seen um, the analysis, the the next stage of analysis work very effectively. If you're using products on your opportunities, which you almost certainly should be, you should be. if you are using products, I don't care what you sell, um, you almost certainly should be using products. Um, but if you are using products, you can then categorize your products by, for example, core products, optional products, service contracts, and, and this kind of thing. <clears throat> so you can create a field and, and just categorize them. And what you often find, um, what we found with a bit of research with one of our customers was, I can't remember the figure, I think it was 60% difference, I think, between the highest and the lowest performer. And when you looked at it, it's because the highest performers, they are regularly adding some of those non-core or ancillary products or support contracts or that you know that it wasn't just about the number of products they were consistently adding those other ancillary um, products to the opportunity so last but not least <laughs> should we talk about targets well let's talk about targets can we just quickly answer one question that's coming before sure. we head on to targets um, yeah. someone has asked they basically said Will the sum of closed date month extensions populate with historical data changes, or is it effective once someone creates the report, his or all currently set at zero? Right. What you need to do is this, is if you install the package, then the metrics will automatically calculate for all new opportunities going forward. Okay. That's because it puts in some fields that help calculate those um, those metrics. Now, when you create a new opportunity, by default, the number of close date changes, by default, when you put it in and you create a new opportunity, is set to zero, the number zero. 
However, although that field will exist on all of the historic opportunities, it's actually blank. So what you need to do, and give, if this sounds a bit complicated, get in touch with us. We'll help you. We'll kind of help you sort it out. But really what you need to do is that field, you just actually go over your historic opportunities, set all those values to zero, and then it will count the number of close date changes from that point onwards. So there's no way of actually retrospectively counting the number of close date changes, but if you set that field for all of your existing opportunities to the number zero as opposed to blank, it will count the number of close date changes from that point on, onwards. If you're not sure about how to do it, get send us an email, get in touch. Get whatever. in touch. We're, we're here we'll, to we'll, help. We'll show you how we do it. That it, Ben? Yeah, yep. So let's talk about targets. Many people have spent a lot of time clicking around in Salesforce looking for the targets tab. Mm. <laughs> Don't waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't no, exist. It's not there. It doesn't exist. There are three ways to measure target in Salesforce, sales performance against target. This is by far and away the easiest one. It's included in the dashboard package. <coughs> Excuse me. It's included in the dashboard package. So this is a simple gauge. Um, it's a dashboard gauge, um, and it runs on a report of closed one opportunities. So this is running on um, uh, target um, pipe, closed one against uh, target for this month, but it could run on the exact report that for this that is showing closed one opportunities. So this report is showing it for the year. Um, if we wanted a target for the year, we could use the gauge here, um, or we could just create that exact same report. It's nice, isn't it? It's simple. It tells simple. you it tells you whether you're going to hit your target. You know, no one wants to be in the red, and you're all pushing towards that green. And and I've known a lot of salespeople that love this because it's it is simple, yep. but it's not without its downside, and that is the admin. <laughs> yes. Well, I think there's two downsides. I think admin. I agree. Yes. I agree. You, if you want to create this chart for every single salesperson, which you probably should do, then you've actually got to create an individual gauge for every salesperson. If the target varies from one month to the next, you've yeah. got to update the red and um, amber and green parameters. Um, if you want to target at the region or the country or the company level or whatever it might be, you've got to tr create an individual gauge um, to do that. It also doesn't really tell you anything about historic. Did we historically achieve target yeah. the other actually I hadn't really thought about this but the other problem is that if I put it in for the year so if a target for the year then obviously February you know, January February March etc I'm going to be sort of down here in the yeah. doldrums somewhere so it's not particularly motivating from, no. from that point of view. on the other hand as Dan says simple easy if you need a solution right this very second that's a simple way to do it yeah that's one way to measure performance against target um, the second way to do it is to yes. use the, the forecast, forecast tab. The forecast tab. Yeah. Um, everybody will have access to the forecast tab. Will everyone uh, use it, though, Gary? The, the the problem with the the problem with the forecast tab yep. is it is sophisticated, but Maybe it's quite challenging yes. to use. Yes. I've seen a lot of people trying to use the forecast. You need to train the salesperson. It is a real concerted effort. Um, to manage to performance against target using the forecast tab. Not desperately easy to implement, but if you can implement successfully, quite sophisticated. Yeah. The third way to do it is um, to use a custom solution. Um, we have an app called uh, the Target Tracker, which gets over some of the shortcomings in so much as it very gives you a very visible view of how you are performing against target for this month and for all of the how you performed historically but it also takes account of the pipeline because what this gauge doesn't tell you is, well, I might be, let's say I might be here on the borderline in terms of what deals I've closed one for this month, um, but what about my pipeline? There's still another two weeks to go. So if I close 10%, 20%, what percentage of my pipeline do I need to close in order to achieve my target? So it gets around those issues, and it also helps for pipeline reviews by saying, well, okay, I've got, you know, I've got half my target sitting in my pipeline, but okay, what about the quality of the pipeline? So there's some tools in that app to um, help you do that. There's a video on our website. If you go to our website and look at the apps page, um, then you can look at the target tracker app.
and our other apps um, as well. So Ben, we have, uh, you're waving at me, we had a couple of other questions. Did, did the chat or person who asked about the question or didn't understand, did they come back? Uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> okay. They didn't, unfortunately, okay. but what can you do? Um, okay, so we've had another question, basically, does the dashboard work with Lightning? Yes. Yes. yes, you can download and install the package into a Lightning environment. You've actually got more flexibility in terms of you can then um, customize the size and the number of columns and uh, do all the stuff you can do in Lightning, but, but yes, it does. Okay. Um, another one, do you have any advice on how best to report on recurring revenue models? Okay. Okay. Interesting question. Yes, is the answer. Um, so all of these charts... Um, are based certainly the, the the ones where we're showing you know these sort of things are based on the amount field. So that's the that's the gross value of the deals. Where you have a recurring med, um, revenue module, whether it's a software as a service type of business, or indeed in some manufacturing companies, you you might sell a hundred units, but the customer draws them down over time, or you have service contracts. So you have a total value of the deal, and that would be represented on the, on any of these charts. But you also have a stream of income um, as well. So you have um, income that might be um, either invoiced or realized over 12 months, 24, 36, or whatever, whatever months is. The way to do that, you absolutely can do that. Um, you need to be using products, but as we said, you should be using products anyway. Um, you need to be using products, and you can use something with products called schedules. Um, there is a standard function called schedules and you can then forecast um, how that recurring revenue stream will manifest itself so you can have a pipeline of based on the amount failed but you can also have a pipeline based on well actually what would my future income look like on those recurring revenues okay and um, finally any advice on the best way to measure pipeline velocity um, yes um, use our app it's the only way to do it um, what the app does is it, it actually as the opportunities move through the various stages it tracks the time in each stage and if it goes back a stage it kind of restarts the clock and so on um, and you can um, it'll track the time it'll track how long the time was spent in each stage it will also say um, well actually if I've got a deal in proposal made historically what percentage of these deals did I win and you can split that out new customers versus existing customers and you can um, uh, you can do a bunch of reporting and, and analysis on that Okay. So that does it for today. Thank you. First of all, um, let me just finish on two or three points. First of all, thank you very much for joining us. If you um, have already downloaded the dashboard, then um, it would be a huge favor to us if you would go and leave a review and a rating for it on the App Exchange. Positive only, please. <laughs> yeah, say. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, if it's not positive, let us know. <laughs> or if you've got some ideas. Um, if, you, if you like or dislike this webinar, then get in touch with us as well. What we'll do is we'll send out um, an email. Give us an hour or so. We'll send out an email. Um, and we will include the links to the two dashboard packages, the professional and the enterprise edition. Um, we'll include a link to the ebook um, yes, as well. Good. And of course, um, tomorrow we will um, publish the full new 12 chart blog post, including the uh, webinar recording and, and a bunch of other links as well. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Dan, thanks for your input and your help today ben thank you for all your hard work in organized today's session thanks for all, all of your help thanks everybody thank good you. luck speak to you soon